get to it. Okay. I'm going to do a little, uh, quick little demo on stain for you guys today. Uh, I know we're doing the stool project, but I happen to have this uh, dovetail drawer sample kind of thing here, just a piece in the shop that I, that I found and I thought would be cool for you guys to see the difference in end grain versus uh, face grain. So before we stain, it's super important that you guys have all the sanding done really well. Okay, so all your pencil marks are gone, any of your scratches, right, you're going to work up from uh, 100 grit all the way up to like 220 grit. And then you're also going to ease your corners or break your corners. And that's super important because first of all, it prevents the wood from splintering out in the corners and it also prevents people from getting cut from sharp corners of wood and things like that. Um, what, you need to get, what you need to understand here is that you're not doing this with a power sander. Okay, power sanders, if you go around this, especially on your relatively narrow stool leg, it's going to end up really soft and mushy, kind of rounded looking. That's not what we want. The whole purpose of easing the corner is for it to look crisp, but not feel sharp, if that, if that makes sense. Right, so when we look at this, it still looks square, it looks crisp, but when, when we rub our hands on here, it doesn't feel sharp. Okay, so that I've just taken some... 220 grit paper and I just worked over these corners just to make them uh, feel nice and smooth. Okay, so once that's all done, we're ready for stain. You guys are going to stain in the stain room at the back. Um, try to keep everything in there just because it's well ventilated and all the rest of that. We're going to be using this stuff here. It's a Minwax brand. Anything in a yellow tin is good for you guys to use. It's a penetrating oil stain. So what that means is it penetrates into the wood um, and it doesn't form a film on top per se, like a paint might, right? So you can actually kind of handle it fairly soon after you apply the stain. There's a bunch of different shades back there. This one's natural. There's one called Puritan Pine, which is kind of like a light brown, and there's a medium brown and a dark walnut. So there's a bunch of different shades back there you guys can pick, right? Some of them are in bigger gallon containers too. Um, I'm going to give you guys one glove. Not that this stuff is horrible if it gets on your hands, but it's just easier to kind of keep clean and tidy things up if you at least have one glove like that. Flathead screwdriver, you're going to pop this lid off. And you need to give this a bit of a stir. Okay. Don't shake it. We don't want to make this thing all bubbly. We just want to take a scrap piece of wood from the shopping cart and just kind of stir it up. This is especially important if you are choosing a stain that has a darker color in it because all of the pigments are actually solids that are suspended in, in the oil and they can settle to the bottom. So it's really important that you kind of just give it a good stir, mix it up a little bit. Like I say, especially important with the darker shades. Okay. So there's that. Now there's a couple of different ways we can actually apply this stain. Um, the first is, is a rag. So I like to cut myself a little square of, of rag like this. We've got a bunch in the box there behind Andrew. About six inches square. And just fold this thing up into a nice little pad. Just kind of like that. All right. I like the rag just because it, it seems to hold a fair bit of stain. Right, so just dip a little bit in there, and then we can go ahead and, and apply this. Now, what you guys need to understand with a penetrating oil stain is that the stain will only penetrate the wood so far before it just stays on top and forms a sticky layer. Okay, so I, I actually I loaded up the rag a fair, fair bit. And I'm going to keep on rubbing this thing until there's no more stain that transfers at all. Okay, so I haven't re-dipped the rag yet. Probably almost do this entire thing. Didn't actually plan on that. actually work Got through the whole the whole thing okay so um, 
You probably all, all have heard the term that less is more, right? This is absolutely true in this case. Um, seriously, just continue rubbing the stain in until no more transfers at all. You'll see when it kind of starts to get thin, then you can take it and dip a little bit more and keep on going. Um, people make the mistake all the time of just slopping it on there, a heavy coat, and you might think that that's good, like it's more protection or something, but in actual fact it's not. Like I said, the stain only penetrates into the wood so far until it sits on top and becomes super sticky. One of the seniors did that actually with that table right there. And I went back into the stain room and found like this huge lake of stain on top of there and it dried over the weekend and it became super sticky and he spent hours trying to scrape all that stickiness off of there. So seriously, less, less is more, okay? Two coats is kind of the best, two real thin light coats and, and that's all you need. Okay, so there's the rag. Um, if there's no rags, you can also do that with a paper towel. Right, same kind of idea, just fold it up. <clears throat> Make a nice little application pad like that, just something that you can handle. Right, rub it in and do, and do the same thing. Two coats is best. Uh, what I like to do for the second coat is actually polish uh, the stain in with sandpaper. Okay, so you would actually let this dry for about half an hour and then you could reapply from there. This is a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. I have 400 and I have 600. Both have the similar kind of result. You can take the sandpaper, dip it in just a little bit as well, and actually apply the stain like this. And what this does is it actually does sand a little bit of the wood that's on top, but it kind of mixes with the oil and creates a bit of a, a bit of a mud or a slurry. And it just kind of, it creates almost like a, like a wood filler. This is especially uh, effective if you're into a wood like oak or something like that with larger pores that's coarser. It almost acts like a grain filler because you, you almost get kind of like a wood filler effect when the sawdust mixes with the oil and uh, and then you actually get a really nice smooth super smooth finish on your uh, on your wood okay so just rub that in all right and and that's that so you can see the cool effect that the, the difference, the end grain here soaks up the stain so much more than the face grain, so we kind of get that darker look. And I think that's kind of neat, makes a dovetail stand out. Once you let this sit for, say, half an hour, even if you, even if you come back the next class, that's fine too, as long as you haven't put too much stain on there. Take a fresh rag, and you're going to buff it off. So let's uh, time ahead, let's say that this is about an hour later. And you're just going to take that rag and you're going to buff it out. Even when we do a thin coat, there's still a bit of a sticky layer that has to be uh, buffed off. Okay? Just the excess that's sat on top. There's nothing worse than um, you know, a stained finish that feels sticky that no one wants to touch. Okay, so there we go. Nice smooth finish, nice kind of golden hue with that natural color, and, uh, and it's buffed off and doesn't feel sticky. So that is, that is it, okay? Um, just a couple things about putting stain away. Make sure that the lid goes back on. Take a little hammer, tap that back on. Make sure that this goes back into the yellow fire cabinet. Um, your rags, rags or paper towels if they've had stain on them, they have to go in that metal fire can okay, that's in the stain room because they actually will catch, they will catch fire. They will spontaneously ignite. Okay, so put them in the, in the uh, metal fire can and make sure that that stain room is tidied up when you guys are done. Gloves just go in the garbage and that's it. Okay.